Hello, my fellow flyers. The English Proficiency Test for Aviation, or EPTA, is a test of speaking and listening proficiency specifically designed to apply to the aviation context and to comply with the International Civil Aviation Organization, IKO, language proficiency testing requirements. It is intended to be taken by aviation personnel who work as international pilots, air traffic controllers, and aeronautical operators. It was designed to comply with the IKO language proficiency testing requirements. The EPTA is composed of tape mediated questions and a personal interview. The EPTA is a specialized test designed to contain 100% aviation specific materials, topics, and situations. It assesses the speaking and listening ability of the examinee through his response to various work related situations conditions presented. I am providing you this uh, sample testing uh, practice format on my channel. I hope it serves you well in your quest to become a level four, five, six English speaking aviator. During the process, just remember the three P's, proceed, process, and perform. Proceed the given set of circumstances for a flight. Process by evaluating their impact on flight safety. Perform by implementing the best course of action. With that, happy flying. Hi, my name is Iman, and I'm your interviewer. How are you today? For the record, can you please tell me your complete name and home address? Would you encourage young people to follow a career in aviation? Why or why not? Yes, I have hopes that my five-year-old son will become a pilot just like me. Why? Because the aviation industry is one of the fastest growing industries in the area of transportation. If someone asked me whether they should become a pilot or not, I think I would try to be as objective as possible. Although I love my job, it is not for everyone. I would tell the person what I believe the good point and bad points about being a pilot are. This will allow the person to make an informed decision about whether a career in aviation is right for them or not. That being said, I don't think anybody should pass up the chance to learn how to fly if given the opportunity. Your aircraft is loaded to its maximum weight, and according to the pilot's operating handbook, at this weight, the airplane can only climb to flight level 350. 
You are now cruising at flight level 290 when Tokyo Control contacts you. Hotel Lima 1234, Tokyo Control. Due to traffic, climb to and maintain flight level 370. Tokyo Control, unable due to weight. We can accept flight level 350, Hotel Lima 1234. Tokyo Control, Unable to climb to flight level 370 due to weight. We can accept flight levels up to flight level 350 only. Hotel Lima 1234. Imagine that you are the pilot of Hotel Lima Air with the following information. Your call sign is Hotel Lima 1234. Your aircraft type is a Boeing 777ER. You are now holding on runway 16 right when Tower calls you for a revised clearance and post-departure instructions. Hotel Lima, one, two, three, four, hold position. After departure, climb straight ahead 5,000 feet before turning right. Hotel Lima, one, two, three, four, hold deep. After departure, climb straight ahead 5,000 feet before turning right. You are the pilot of Hotel Lima 1234. Your aircraft is at gate 12 of the terminal and all passengers are on board. Before requesting for startup and pushback, you want to check your radio signal with the Narita ground. Narita Ground, Hotel Lima, 1234, Gate 12, Radio Check, 124, Decimal 3. Hotel Lima, 1124, Narita Ground, 324, are you ready for startup? Narita Ground, negative. This is Hotel Lima, 1234. I repeat. Hotel Lima 1234, we are ready for startup. What would you do if instruments warn you during flight that there is a steady decrease in cabin pressure? If cabin pressure cannot be restored, it is necessary to descend to between 8,000 and 10,000 feet so the passengers can breathe normally. This is an emergency situation that must also be related to the controller. If there is a suitable airport, I may land the airplane immediately. Flying at a low altitude to the destination is also an option. The first thing I would do is declare an emergency, inform the controller about the situation, and request to descend to a lower altitude. An altitude between 8,000 and 10,000 feet is ideal so passengers can breathe normally. As we are descending, I would diagnose the problem and try to restore cabin pressure. If cabin pressure cannot be restored, then depending on the distance to the destination airport, I may continue on or make a request to the controller to land at the nearest suitable airport.
you have 15 seconds to look at the picture provided. In your opinion, what happened to the aircraft? How did it happen? The aircraft possibly overran the runway while landing. Its front gear collapsed when it reached the soft ground at the end of the runway. After it stopped, the passengers declined. The aircraft most likely overran or overshot the runway. Whether this happened during the landing phase or the takeoff phase cannot be determined from the picture. In addition, the front landing gear has collapsed, most likely as a result of rolling over an unpaved surface at high speeds. The emergency slides have been deployed, which indicates that the passengers were deplaying after the aircraft came to a rest. A recent study reveals that in-flight fire is one of the leading causes of commercial aviation fatalities. In your opinion, does this show that flight crews lack training in fighting in-flight fire? Explain your answer. I believe pilots receive enough training in fighting in-flight fires. If the result of the study reflects reality, I think authorities should focus on the root cause of the problem. They should look into the reason why in-flight fires are so common. I do not believe the results of the study alone can be used to determine whether flight crews lack proper training in fighting in-flight fires. I believe the study points to a bigger problem. The question that authorities should be asking is why in-flight fires are common enough to be the leading cause of fatalities in aviation-related accidents. Although training in the proper way to extinguish fires is necessary, efforts should be made to prevent the fires from breaking out in the first place.